Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. I'm Brian Parks, and in this video, I want to talk about building CI pipelines using GitLab CI. And specifically, we're going to build a, Git, uh, a CI pipeline for the Glass Minnow project that I've been working on for the past several weeks on the channel. Um, if you want to go back and watch some of those videos, you're more than welcome to, but you don't have to in order to understand what we're going to talk about in this video. So with that, let me switch over to demo mode and uh, let's let's get right into it. So here's Visual Studio Code. Um, I, this project already had a, a, a GitLab CI uh, pipeline set up for it several years ago when, when I was originally uh, working on this project uh, in its previous life. Uh, but when I started dusting it off and, and prepping it for this video series, I actually just disabled uh, the, the, the CI configuration. So first thing we're going to do is rename this to uh, .gitlab-ci.yml. Uh, and you'll see with the icons that I have selected in Visual Studio Code, uh, the icon changes to be a little GitLab icon. The, I think that's a cat, uh, some, something like that, cat, fox, something with pointy ears. Uh, anyway, that shows that I have it named the correct thing for GitLab to be able to use it. And before I just you know, commit this uh, and, and push it up to GitLab, let me first just kind of take a, a quick look through what's going on here and potentially some changes that we might want to make. Um, so it looks like when I built this initially, I encapsulated something in, uh, in a, in a shell script. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, looks like then we get composer and then looks like we're installing something called fa. I think I used that for testing. Um, we'll probably want to sw swap that out for something like PHP unit, um, but we might do that, you know, down the road, not right now. Then we do our general uh, composer install, you know, as you might expect, um, just to get all the, the required uh, vendors, populate this vendor directory. And then the actual script that uh, will, will uh, happen Oh, this is this is in our test phase. So initially, it looks like I just want to print out the version that's being used, which should be 7.0. We'll want to update that because everywhere else we're actually using 8.0. So let's go ahead and make that change right now. Then we looks like we're linting. That's what this is. PHP L uh, linting all of the PHP files. Uh, in the app directory, so this app directory here. So that wouldn't include vendors. We don't want to lint those. We assume that the upstream uh, maintainer is, is taking care of linting, testing, all that good stuff. Uh, and then we just run fa, the, the test framework. And I am, I'm curious, do we have any tests? It looks like we do. First test passes trivially, that's cool authorize.net looks like none of that is running so when we go through and replace this with php unit uh, we can actually just blow away this this test directory and, and start fresh so that'll actually be nice next stage is build which it looks like we just call off to a shell script and then we set artifacts uh, i'm guessing this build.sh script uh, creates a file something.tar.bc2 uh, and it looks like we're only doing this on master. Uh, so in this video, I'm not going to go through every single configuration option that you can add to this, to the .gitlab-ci.yaml file. Um, that documentation is on GitLab's uh, main site. It's extensive, it's well-documented. Every time they make a change, you can see what the change is and, and why they're making it. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that here. Uh, I'm just going to show how I'm using this to to build out this this CI uh, pipeline. And then 
we are deploying to staging, a staging environment, uh, which this is actually a template uh, that I've been using for, I don't know, years and years and years. Uh, basically what it does is we install git and open SSH. Not sure why we install git. We shouldn't really need that for this, but we install SSH and then we're storing the SCP private key in a um, in a variable inside the um, the the GitLab CI configuration, um, and I don't have this configured, but I will show you where this would get configured. Uh, so this this step is actually going to fail. Um, so we might actually uh, completely disable this step, um, but for now. Let's actually just change this to glassminnow.com. Um, again, this this probably won't, this shouldn't succeed. Uh, but let's dive into what I currently have for these um, these build and deploy scripts. So build. Well, let's start with Docker install. So what are we doing here? Looks like. We install some things. Okay, okay, this this makes sense. Uh, so this is um, basically this is very similar to what we're what we're doing. Um, what I started doing when I configured the yeah that'll work this Docker file. So install PHP extensions. We do this. Of course, here I'm using this. Uh, install PHP extensions uh, helper script, whereas here I'm just using the docker php ext install uh, script that the actual docker image provides. Uh, so in this case I want pdo mysql, I want zip, and this should be um, just all of the uh, the prereqs for pdo mysql and zip. zlib is for zip, uh, pcre, I'm not sure what that's for, uh, and I, I, I really don't know why why we need Git. But hmm. okay, so in the build dot uh, this is this is a common thing that I do. There's actually an easier way to do this in in GitLab CI. Uh, there's some built-in uh, variables um, that I've done in, in that I've used in some some other uh, kind of similar scripts. Uh, basically so that I can get either, you know, is it on a branch? Is it on master? I can use master as the, the name of the file. Uh, or is it on a, just a, you know, just a branch somewhere, in which case I can either use the branch or the commit hash. Um, and it looks like I give a note for myself, colon this this syntax is the same as yes because that really helps me understand what's going on uh, it looks like providing a default value um, so basically uh, either exclude pull in exclude whatever the current value of exclude is otherwise it's uh, it's just empty and then it looks like We create a list here, and then all we're doing is what are we doing here? Sort dash u is a unique sort. I have no idea what this is doing. It looks like we're creating a list of files and then creating a bz2 of all the relevant files. Okay, I suppose that makes sense. Uh, basically, we're built, we're packaging up all of the PHP files um, and including presumably uh, Composer or all the everything in the vendor file and vendor folder. No, we're not. So what are we doing? I, th this doesn't make any sense to me. We might have to just run this and, and see what's 
what what's going to happen. Uh, let's look at deploy. Um, okay, so we're going to interesting. So if you if you've watched the video where I played around with Go uh, and and recorded it, uh, I actually built a, a deployment tool called Whiskey, um, which itself was a rewrite of a set of bash scripts that I used for continuous deployment or some sort of deployment. Um, this was a very early version of what ultimately became Whiskey. So uh, if, if some of this code looks familiar, uh, you probably saw it in that video. So basically what we do is we create uh, a new directory in the server side and we unzip or we we extract the uh, the bz2 that we created in the build step uh, looks like we created an environment uh, file so this this should basically um, for the most part uh, it should be production or I guess in this particular situation it's staging uh, here we go so that's where we run composer install um, Pales Migrate is an older version of how we do database migrations. Um, so I actually built a, a series of tools specifically for Pales that included a, a little utility to, to take all of these migration scripts and apply them to the, to the database. So that's what that, that step does. Um, then we uh, remove the, the symlink to current and then create a new sim link called current to the new version that we just installed. We remove the bz2 file because we don't need it anymore. We've installed everything and then we're done. Now, on the other hand, on the local side, basically within the CI runner, um, really all we should do is, yeah, we SCP some files up, uh, this, this script, um, yeah up to that that path. Uh, we SCP the artifact up. Um, got some error checking here, that's cool. And then basically we SSH, and instead of running bat, just bash, we actually run this script, or the, the version of the script that we, we uploaded. Come on, come on. There we go. We do that. Uh, and it looks like we added a, a little utility I added a little utility back in the day um, where I pipe that through this little prefix routine, um, which was defined up here. Basically, it prefixes every line that it prints out with, uh, it with, with a prefix, which in this case we specify to be remote colon. So that's cool. So let's see, let's see what's hap what, what actually happens. So I'm going to go back to gitlabci.yaml and make sure I changed that to 8.0 and I saved it. Um, and we're, we're just going to commit right to uh, master uh, git add dot. And yeah, that looks right. And let's push. All right, so now um, let's uh, go over here and go over to um, GitLab, which is where I have this living. go there's our PHP app and in let me let me bump that the font size up for you and eh, that might be a little big okay so here's the PHP app I have in GitLab if I go to CICD it'll show me the pipelines and you can see this is the latest uh, you can see the commit message that I just added spin up a new CI pipeline and we can actually see how it's going uh, well it failed so let's, let's see why it failed. 
C. No package libzip found. That's cool. Um, I don't really know what the issue is. It looks like, hmm, what do I need? Zip greater than dot eleven does not equal one three one does not equal one that's have no. I think that's supposed to be handled by this install or that that's the theory anyway. Let's uh, let's just go back to here and let's just not so there's in Docker install. Let's just not install that uh, that um, extension for PHP and we'll see what happens. Let's commit. Uh, so I, I have aliases CI get commit. Um, um, don't install install zip extension on build and now we'll push and now we can go back to CICD and we can see what happens uh, in just a second here it should uh, show a new pipeline we can oh there there it goes and let's let's uh, let's pull up the log so we can watch it in real time so we're doing the app get update uh, app get install. Okay, we knew we know all this succeeded uh, before. Install PDO MySQL that also succeeded. It's going to skip over the PHP exit install uh, zip. Um, and let's see what else happened. Uh, so fa ah, that's what we needed zip for the fa command. Okay. Uh, so we're probably going to have some other failures. Yeah, it totally failed. So at least we know a why why we were installing the zip extension, and b we know that there are other things that are going to fail. So let's let's actually just uh, take the the pho pieces out because we we're actually going to add in uh, PHP unit a little bit later. Uh, but I, I think it's okay to, to just take it out right now. Well, this is my project, so I'm going to decide that it's okay to take these things out right now. That's get ci dash am This is usually how I, I, I debug uh, my, my CI pipelines because uh, there's really no way to do it locally. Um, I mean, I can test maybe bits and pieces like some of those, um, those scripts I might be able to test. Obviously, one is designed to set up the, the Docker image the way we need it. Um, but there's really no way to test that it all works together. Yeah, I, each command works in tandem with all the other commands that I have in there. So usually what I do is I write kind of a, a skeleton CI pipeline. I might even start with one job. I might start with one job that does all the things rather than three independent jobs. Um, the only reason I, I'm starting with three independent jobs here is because they, they were already written. So I figured, you know, just just start with what's there and then modify as necessary. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with a GitLab CI config. I'll push, uh, usually not on master. Usually I will do this on a branch. Uh, since this is a small project, I'm the only one working on it right now. Um, I'm just pushing to master for now. We'll get into better, um, you know, better dev workflow practices as, as we get deeper into the project. But for now, we're committing to master. Um, 
and I'll just I'll watch the jobs. I'll see what happens. So it looks like our linting went pretty went pretty well, or is going pretty well. So far, so good. It looks like it's done, but it hasn't turned into a green check mark here. Let's just go. Let's just go back to the pipelines view, and we do see a green check mark there. So that's that's good. Our test phase passed, which right now it's just doing linting. So build. Let's see how this does. So we installed a bunch of stuff. Uh, build, the build.sh ran. Uploading art artifacts found one matching files. So we can actually browse and see the artifacts here. So there's my commit hash. Here's, here's the commit hash listed there and you can see it's reflected in the file name. Um, it's a BC2 file. I get the option to download it. 17.9 megabytes. That sounds reasonable, uh, especially since uh, we're not doing uh, the composer install here. Uh, that might be something that I might want to change. I might actually want to do the composer install as part of the build process. That way, when I upload the uh, a zip file, it's just the whole thing ready to go. I don't know. I'll have to think on that. I'm not exactly sure what I, what I want to do there. Let's go back to the pipeline view and see. Yeah, okay. The the deploy did fail, All right? So we actually have we have we have two there. I only remember the one. Build deploy staging deploy. Oh, okay. So it's basically a copy of. Yeah, let's change that as well. Last no. Yeah. And this is, this is going to fail because we actually have nowhere for this to go. Um, so uh, let's actually change this to uh, when, I think it just goes on the same line, when manual, yeah, okay. So let's save and let's, let's push that. Because continuous deployment, what did I do? I forgot to actually add anything. Continuous deployment is actually next week's topic. So we'll just do this, the continuous integration and we'll push that. And now I did say that I would show you where that uh, that variable gets set. Actually, I'm out of curiosity. Let's see. Let's see where it failed. Uh, my guess is, yeah, okay. Error loading key dev fd63. This syntax here, uh, what it does is basically uh, runs a command and sends it through to a pipe and replaces that whole thing in the, the, the command with the name of that pipe or the name of the, let's see, the output side of the pipe. The, the piece that can be used as, as input to something else. Uh, dev FD63 is the, the out, outside of the pipe. So SCP private key. So the, where you would set that is in settings, you CICD and variables. And yeah, they've added, GitLab has added features uh, to this since I started using it. I think when I started using it, it was just key and value. And I think it was actually right here. You didn't, it didn't pop up this modal. They've since added lots of things. So you can either be a file or a variable. This is a variable, various environments. So for instance, if I had uh, a, an SCP key for um, production and a different one for uh, Staging, I could separate them by scope, but for right now, I would do SCP private key, and then I would copy the private key and paste it in here. So you would end up with something that uh, looked like this, and then you know some gobbledygook, and then and private key. Um, I'm obviously not going to save this because that would not be in the right format. But before we 
uh, get to continuous deployment in next Monday's video, I, I will have created a private key and I will save it here. Um, I'm not going to do that on camera because it's a private key. Um, but by the time we get there on Monday, this will be set up and you'll see it actually get used in the, um, the deployment pipeline. So let's, uh, let's see if the rest of the pipeline has run. Um, and you'll see because we set these both to manual, this icon changes to skipped. We get green check mark, we get green check mark and the pipeline itself is listed as passed. Now, if we were to click one of these buttons and manually run that, and it were to fail, the overall status of the pipeline here would change to failed. Um, so uh, with that, uh, let me make sure there's nothing else I wanted to show you from the GitLab CI file. No, I think it's, it's, that's pretty much what I wanted to show. Um, yeah, I'll leave links to the documentation for uh, GitLab CI. Uh, this will work whether you're using uh, the hosted GitLab or the self-hosted GitLab. So ho hosted, I, I should I should be more specific. Whether you're using GitLab.com or whether you're self-hosting GitLab, like I am, uh, this GitLab CI stuff will work exactly the same. And it also doesn't matter if you're paying for it or if you're using a uh, free tier, same thing. I'm not paying for GitLab. Uh, I'm using the free self-hosted model and I get all of this um, yeah, for, for free. You know, I just have to set up the infrastructure. Um, you do have to set up runners and stuff like that. Um, that's outside the scope of this video. Uh, but again, there's plenty of documentation on that and I'll leave the documentation of all of GitLab CI stuff uh, in the description below. So with that, uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, be sure to subscribe to, so you'll see uh, both future installments in this series and the rest of this week. I will be talking about uh, some of the decisions and uh, kind of things I've been thinking about uh, as I've been planning how to actually deploy this uh, so that A, you guys can play around with the actual thing um, and so that I can have the complete CI CD pipeline. Uh, again, we'll, we'll actually finish that next Monday. Um, but be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that, that uh, notification bell so you'll get notified when the videos get released. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this in this series. Uh, give a comment below if you have questions, comments, concerns, other things. If you've used GitLab CI before and really like it or really hate it and have uh, information that other viewers might, might find interesting, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, but for now, I will talk to you later. Uh, see you tomorrow. Have a great day and uh, hope this helps.